Happy Q3, everybody. This means one thing and one thing only. We have a brand new stable version of Halo PSA that was dropped at the end of Q3. End of Q2, start of Q3. So we are talking today about version 2.152, which is the latest stable of Halo PSA. We've just come from version 2.143. And as always, there has been a plethora of changes that I'm going to try and digest today for you. Now, if you jump into your Halo PSA, you click on the question mark in the top right and you click on show release details. It should hopefully show for you that you are running now version 2.152. This build I'm in is a beta build because we do try and test a lot of the things before they do hit production, but I will only focus on things that have changed since the last version and the current stable. There's no particular order of these. They kind of are listed out on my other monitor in the order that I'm gonna go through today, but some might be a little bit chop and changey. So let's jump straight into it. My name is Connor Fagan. We are Winnated Solutions and we are going to be talking about version 2.152. So let's jump into it. So the first thing I'm going to talk about today is we've added the option to assign the account manager of the customer of the ticket and the incoming service must be enabled to use this feature. If you haven't set up the new incoming service yet for instant email, check out my other video that will be linked somewhere around wherever the hell Dylan does it. Dylan, link it somewhere. Cheers, love you. So what does this mean? This means that on configuration of a ticket or of an action, what we can do under the default agent, we can now change it to the account manager. So you could make an action in your Halo to escalate to account manager, and that will then escalate it to the account manager of the customer. The Adobe Sign Acrobat integration has now also came into Halo PSA. This also allows us to now send quotations to be signed via Adobe Sign rather than signed via the Halo option. What that looks like is when you have a quote, you can click the button sync to third party signing suite and that will then allow your customer to sign it through Adobe Sign as opposed to using the Halo Accept Quote feature built in. A warning can now be shown and again I am flying through to bear with me. A warning can now be shown when tickets are updated by an email address not in the CC list. What this means is if we have the new incoming uh, email sender verification on it will let us know that the, you know, the person that's replied to the ticket wasn't the original person that either raised it or was on the CC list. To enable this, we can go to configuration. We can go to security down the left-hand side. We can scroll all the way down and we can find the one that says incoming email sender verification. Ensure the ticket updates via email come from a trusted email address. And we can display a warning above the ticket if it was updated by someone that didn't originally log it always added to the CC address. A setting has been added to the sales and ticket type so we can set the default PDF used for quotations. This means if you are sending a quotation from a ticket, we can now default what PDF template we want. If we go to an action, no, ticket type, sorry. So let me just do this one here. And we go to the settings tab and we go down to PDF prints. We can now default the PDF template for quotations, meaning if you do have a hardware quote ticket type and a software quote ticket type, you can default what those PDF templates look like. I'm just going to read out a small list of changes that I'm not going to go through, but this is all around quoting. Many minor changes and improvements to administration and managing of quotes. There's a whole bunch of things in here and I don't want to take this entire video up. I will do another video in the few weeks going through all the new quoting things. But by all means, just search the word quoting in version 2.145 and you will see all of the things that have been added. Alternatively, if you go to a quotation screen now, you will see a bunch of new buttons, things like update table values where you can now very quickly and easily edit the things on the quote. It is a dream. We've added an improved search functionality method for tickets. So if you go to configuration, you go to advanced settings, you search for the search 
or you can scroll down all the way to searching, you can now turn on this checkbox. This checkbox hurts me inside on so many levels, but I'm just gonna say what it is. You can tick the search box, use the new search method. Now, anyone that's worked in IT for any period of time, we never use the word new because new always becomes old. I also can't tell you what this is actually doing, but I do recommend selecting the checkbox getting rid of the old full text search method and using the new search method in Halo PSA. Added the ability to update rows in custom tables, or should I say bulk rows in custom tables, which is this one here. How does this work? What does it look like? Well, if you have a custom table in Halo, and these can be done in many areas, of course, I'll do this one here, and we have data in it. What we can do is we can now select multiple rows in the table and click edit and then I can override this and bulk update the values in the table press save and there we go a pop-up has been added to tickets for service users what does this mean if we have a user in our system I'm just going to pick an old Lynn Robbins over here and we mark that user on the right hand side as a service user and we go to one of their tickets, when we open it, it's gonna now give us a modal pop-up, said this end user is a service user. If this happens, this means this user is probably marked incorrectly in your system or in their 365 environment, if they are actually a licensed user and not a service user. Again, small quality of life, but really nice to have. This setting is a major setting. This is a, a bit of a game changer on so many levels, and it actually relates back to the last point about service users. We've added a setting to the Microsoft CSP integration to make use as a service user if they do not have an assigned license from a specified list. What that means is if we go to the integration for Microsoft CSP, we go to the Microsoft Entro ID tab and scroll to the very bottom. We have a import users as a service account unless they are assigned one of the below licenses. And then what we can do is select all the licenses we want to have to check against, which you could just do all of them if you wanted to or cared. Click, 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 click. Go, 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 go. There we go. So if we if we have a user and a tenant and they don't have one of these licenses, it will still import them, but it will mark them as a service account. This is massive. This saves so much headache and pain, and I just I love this. I can't wait to tell all of our partners about it. So if you do use the Entro or CSP integration, go and set this up right now. Obviously, just select the licenses you're most concerned about. They will probably be A1, E1, Business Premium, Business Basic licenses um, for the most part, and anything else that you deem as an active user, maybe Exchange Online licenses, etc. But this will be a game changer for everyone involved. Another really big change that's came is um, when this loads is added the option to create pro rata, but add it to the ready for invoicing and not automatically include it in recurring invoices. What the hell does that mean? Well, this is actually because of me shouting about this a lot, I think, but basically, thank you, Tim, much love. One of the problems we have in Halo PSA or had in Halo PSA is if we have an annual recurring product, let's say business premium, you sell it annually, but you add a license within that period, how the hell do we invoice it? So the only method we used to have in Halo PSA, if I just do it on a subscription for something, the option we used to have was invoice immediately for the change. So if we add a license in mid period and we co-term it, and we add it to their recurring invoice, we could immediately invoice them for the change. The problem with that was is you can't really review it. You can end up spamming the customer if they have like three changes, they get three invoices additional plus the monthly recurring, and it just didn't really work very well. What they've now done is added the pro rata any changes and add it to the ready for invoicing section for billing separately from recurring invoices. What does that mean? Well, that means if you add a license in, that's a yearly license, you increase the count, it will now show in ready for invoicing. So if there have been a few changes in the period for an annual recurring invoice, we can now invoice the client at the end of the month for all the changes. It's a massive improvement and solves a big headache that a few of our partners had. So thank you, Halo, much love. I'm yet to test it, but I'm sure it will be perfectly fine. Improvement to software licenses. Again, another sticking point that comes up quite a lot. 
Let's say you sell a service or a product that isn't available in Halo PSA yet. How do we track it? How do we keep it up to date? Well, it's a bit of a nightmare. Some people leverage subscriptions. Some people leverage assets and we bill on assets. What you can do though now is under software licenses, if we have business premium, we can now click new and add a user and we can now add a user or users to these licenses to give us our license count and to show us who has those licenses in our Halo environment. We've had two new features come to Halo this quarter. The first one being distribution list module. Now I'm going to be fully transparent with you. I don't think this version actually does this full justice just yet. Here we go. Added a distribution list module. Um, what this means is we can go to a configuration we can go to all features and we can do distribution list. When we do that and turn it on, there is one thing that you're going to have to do because Halo has screwed it up. Sorry, Halo, but it's true. Is you want to go to roles, administrator and permissions. And what you want to find in here is distribution list. And when you enable this, you're only going to have read and send permission by default. You're going to want to change this to read and modify. If you don't do this and you try and make one, you'll get an error message. Once you enable that, you will then see it either in your overflow menu or down your left hand side bar. We can click it. This is one I did for Holly the other day. Hi, Holly, if you're watching. But basically, we can click new. We can make a distribution list. Let's just call it YouTube and we can press save. And then we can add all of the members to this distribution list. So we can then email out and send emails to this distribution list either is a bulk with everyone BCC'd in or as individual emails. In the next release, which is the next quarter along, they're adding dynamic distribution lists. So you're able to actually create these distribution lists from dynamic SQL. So get, make me a distribution list for all the people, all clients with the first name of Ben, for instance. So again, massive. We've also seen this month, or this quarter, should I say, the introduction of the document management module. Here we go added a document management module. Again, following the same as before, click configuration, click on document or type in document and enable the document management feature. This then gives you this new window and you can do either a new folder or a new document. And this will then allow you to drag and drop and manage documents inside of Halo PSA. Again, I think this is quite early doors for this feature. I don't particularly love it. However, if you do have a lot of documents, this could be a great way to store them. Added the setting, don't send acknowledgement email for an email rule. What this means is if we go to configuration, we go to emails and email rules. Be very careful making these. What we now have is this checkbox which says do not or don't send acknowledgement. This means you can make an email rule for a certain supplier or a certain group of people. And you can basically say never send them an acknowledgement email when they email in. I don't particularly think I have any use case for this because what I would always do is make dynamic email exclusions and I would add their email address into here. However, if you have a use for it, there you go. Added the ability to merge customers. Praise the Lord. If we go to configuration in the bottom left, we go to users and general setting. There is now a checkbox in here, which is allow the merging of customers. This means we can then go to our customers page. We can click on Robbie's IT and we can click merge customer and we can select which customer we want to merge with. This is a one time one and done thing. So if you're going to do this, test it and make sure you're happy with what's about to happen. This cannot be undone. And once you do it, you're going to have a nightmare trying to undo it. Added the functionality to create custom navigation buttons. You'll notice in my build, if you've been paying attention, that on the left hand side, I have Google down here now, which basically means I can click Google. This will blow your minds and it'll take me to Google. I do think Halo have missed something with this though, because what it does is it replaces the current tab, which is genuinely really frustrating, but I'm going to feed back to them straight after this video and say, can you make it have the option to pop out in a new tab? But how do we set up such things? If we go to configuration, we go all the way down to advanced settings and we scroll all the way down in there to navigation menu. 
or screen layout profiles, I apologize. And then navigation menu. You can then build different profiles out. If I select this one and click button layout, this is where you can reorganize and shuffle things on the left hand side pane. What you can also do if you scroll to the very bottom is you can view your custom button configuration. You can click on that and make a new one. And I'm just going to call this website https www.nada.co.uk. And I can click, I don't know, world globe. There we go, globe, and press save. That has now made us a custom navigation button. I can then go back to advanced setting all the way down to screen layout profiles, navigation menu, navigation menu, button layout, edit, scroll all the way down. Whew. And then we can edit this and say if we want to hide it, show it on the menu or show it on the overflow. If you do show on menu and press save and refresh or wait a second, it will then show. Or you could even drag it to the very top of the list like so, press save. And then now we have at the very top of our halo, a shortcut to our website, which is going to be dropped in the coming days. But we'll move on to the final release note note of today, which is for anyone that does approval stuff, um, massive, honestly, but what's happened in Halo now is they've added the ability to auto approve approvals if the approver is the end user of the ticket. So we can go to configuration, we can go to tickets, we can go to approval processes. We can set up processes, so click set up processes. If you then edit one of the approval process, uh, process steps, we can now select the box auto approve if the approver is the end user of the ticket. So if you have a client called James and James logs a ticket and James is the approver, you can have it automatically approve it if James is an approver and is the one logging the ticket. And that about sums up what I think you need to know about in this quarter's stable release update. That is 20 minutes and I've not been going slow. What I now have to do, because my job is amazing, is go through every single release note, digest it, understand it and test it for every single goddamn version that's happened in the last quarter. Whew, I'm tired. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I will try and do one, one of these every single stable version now because I do think it is really valuable. I will be doing some more videos in the coming weeks to focus on a few areas that I have missed today. I will be doing a video very shortly on AI. There's been so much AI changes in Halo over the last quarter that I didn't want to do it any injustice today by rushing through it. And again, Go through all of these release notes yourself. There may be something that I have missed today because there is loads of them that may really help you improve your help desk or your PSA for your company. So my name's been Connor Fagan. I wish you all good health. Have a beautiful day and we will catch you soon. Take care. Goodbye.